Shame and guilt are the handcuffs of obligation. Obligation is the jail cell that we, as feminine energy biased beings, walk ourselves into and lock ourselves into in order to stay small. In this video, we are going to look at Brene Brown's TED Talk on shame. Her talk is so immense, but it's also general. There is so much value there for the feminine energy biased being. And as a life coach who devotes her niche, her time, it's like my thing. It's like why I was put on this planet, fierce gentleness to bring to the feminine energy biased being. I have to look at this and I have to find all of the ways that we can use this talk for our good, for our thriving, for our empowerment. And so we are going to look at the first point, which takes place at three minutes and 38 seconds in Brene Brown's TED Talk, don't worry. There is a uh, note to find it in the uh, comments section in the description. Um, and we are going to use this note so that we can get used to uncovering discovering and discarding shame in our lives. Let's jump in. But first, housekeeping. Please click the button to subscribe and ring the bell so that you can be notified of the Sparrow Holistic videos as they are released. And there's a really cool bonus. We have an entire group of playlists that are only for subscribers. And this is our Sparrow Holistic Yoga series. I use the menstrual phases to curate classes at different lengths of time that are devoted to our menstrual phases and will best serve our bodies in the particular menstrual phase that we might find ourselves. So definitely subscribe. Now, I promise, we're gonna get into the video. Hi, so I am Christine Marie, if we haven't yet officially met, and you're probably wondering why I am allowed <laughs> to talk about this topic. And it's because I have devoted many years to the divine feminine, to understanding the divine feminine. I started with Kuan Yin and like looked at the symbolic, historic divine feminine, and it's just been off to the races since then. Brene Brown is magnificent, and she is a thought leader in the fields of innovation, in the fields of leadership, in the fields of corporate organization. But her, where she's coming from is so meaningful to the feminine energy biased being, even though she is speaking in a general way. I just see so many connections. So it behooves me not to make this video. We're gonna first look at this line of hers. It's located, like I said before, at minute three minutes and 38 seconds in her TED Talk video on shame. And that is in the description below. So let's see what this line is exactly, because I don't want to mess up this quote. There was a part of me that was working very hard to engineer to stay small. So you've already received a primer on staying small. You knew that we were going in this direction, but this line, this working very hard to engineer to stay small, that is a constant, consistent attention to how can I keep myself small? Where do I keep small? Where do I keep small? And as children, we are set up for that, especially for feminine energy biased beings. And I need to underscore that this is not women. This is any being that finds themselves being activated by feminine energy biased best practices, by touching in, tapping in to the divine feminine. So what that means, divine feminine, there are so many ways to find out if you are a feminine energy biased being, and those ways are covered in other videos. But I really wanna stay on this topic of working very hard at it and getting back to what we're told to do as children. So most of us might be women, most of us are women, and most of us feminine energy bias being are women. And as children, we were rewarded with praise for being a good girl. Oh, look at how well she helps her mother cook and clean. Look at how well she minds the kids and she's only six years old. Look at how well she writes in cursive. We are rewarded for our cleanliness, our orderliness, our obedience. We are not rewarded. Oh, I just heard this great podcast. It was an interview. It was Rachel Rogers podcast, Hello 7. And it was an interview with this woman who is a branding master. I will put a link to the podcast in the description, but she gave the story of how when she was in second grade, 
she was at a Catholic school and they went around the room and they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the men were allowed to say, you know, judge, surgeon, doctor, fireman, firefighter, the women, nurse, teacher, none. I don't think that that was what any of the second graders said. It wasn't mentioned in her story. So anyways, um, she said, I want to be general counsel for Coca-Cola Enterprises or Coca-Cola Incorporated. And she was actually punished for that. She was punished for wanting something that was outside of the lines. We get rewarded for wanting things inside of the lines as feminine energy biased beings. Now, we aren't empowered when we use masculine energy bias beings tools. We're empowered when we use feminine energy bias beings tools, but we've been taught that we're supposed to stay small. That example of cooking, cleaning, helping, we're maintainers of the environment. We're facilitators so that other people can do what they're supposed to do. That makes sense because masculine energy bias beings, that's that the power is in doing. But feminine energy bias beings, our power is in being, and yet we've been told that we're supposed to do to make sure that they can do. And then we get this model, right? We get this model of the working mother. So that means that the mother gets rewarded. She's a good mother if she is maintaining the environment, cooking, cleaning, tending the kids, and working, maintaining the environment, and dot, dot, dot. But if she steps outside of the line and maybe does, goes for a Mr. Mom arrangement with the husband or nanny arrangement or just as specific with her time and uses it in a way that is not in this realm, in this, this sphere of service, of maintenance of the environment, then she is outside and not in a good way. <laughs> She's ostracized, she's condemned, she's criticized for not being a good mother, a good woman. I don't even like how that feels because it's just not true. We're rewarded for staying small and we keep ourselves small with shame. And oftentimes we don't even realize that it's shame because we've got guilt over it. And we've got the guilt happening because we are supposed to, we should, we are obligated to do these things that we were told as children at four, five, and six that are our responsibilities, even though they're actually not. So that's why this line is really powerful because we are working very hard to engineer to stay small. What do we do with that? Okay, well, that's why we're watching this video. You know that everything is about getting into alignment. The fastest way to get into alignment is to dot, dot, dot. Watch this entire channel and all of the videos I put out forever. <laughs> no, in this video, we're emphasizing the power of just acknowledging shame so that we can, if we break that, sh that handcuff of shame, then we're out of the handcuffs of guilt. And then we can, we can jigger the lock and get our way out of the jail cell that we're putting ourselves in. But most of us can't even handle being outside of the jail cell. You know those people um, that Plato talks about in, in Plato's discourses. He talks about the cave people, the people who live in the cave and their whole world is about living in that cave. And when someone says, well, what about what's out there? The possibility of leaving is death to them because it's just the other. And so they are encouraged to stay in the cave. The person leaves and goes out and is never heard from again because that person knows to try to convince the people in the cave to come outside is a waste of time. And it's so good out here. He doesn't want to be condemned or she. Look at how I did that. Look at how my example. Now it does help that it's written in he and him in the discourses, but still I did that. I'm going to own that and claim that because it shows how far I have to go. That person goes outside. They run the risk like all prophets of death after condemnation when if they return to the world so okay plato's discourses over there now we can see shame in our lives if we are looking for it and an easy way to do that is to notice because it's our habit for most of us who are feminine energy biased beings we're out of alignment and what keeps us out of alignment is our habit so all we have to do is observe ourselves how do we observe ourselves so that we can uncover, discover, and discard this shame element and do all the things that I spoke about earlier? Break through. 
we can use mindfulness. We can use the pause. We can use Marie Kondo's awesome phrase, does this bring me joy? Marie Kondo uses the phrase for decluttering things. This is a process of decluttering our lives, of decluttering beliefs that are limiting, decluttering beliefs that are no longer serving us, acknowledging that we may have a habit and a strong familiarity with shame, a, sh a familiarity that is so strong that we think that that is comfort. That's some work that we have to do. But in order to even get started and to get aware of this work, we pause and we let ourselves find out if maybe this request, this question, this action that we're about to take, if, if maybe it does give us joy or if it's something that we're doing out of obligation. Now, some answers to the questions might be, yes, it brings me joy because Yes, it brings me joy. I mean, if I don't do it, no one else will. And I don't want to have to do it later. So it brings me joy for that reason. Anytime that you have to validate an answer to the question, does this bring me joy? Anytime the answer is outside of yes, there's your, there's your indicator. Do, 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 do. Shame. Guilt. Obligation. Now, thought experiment. What if there was a world where you are not in charge of everything. What if there was a world where if you don't do it, then somebody else does do it. You can co-create that world for yourself. That's there for you. And you can do that right now, even if you're out of alignment. Because all that means is that you're shooting the arrow, but it's not reaching the target. But the arrow is still shot. If you shoot enough of those arrows, eventually, the message will get through to the universe and it will start helping you. It'll start reorienting your life, even if you're out of alignment. But you're watching this video and you're this far in, so there's a strong chance that you want and have the ability to get into alignment very quickly. So uncover, discover, discard, shame. Use the pause to find when shame is present. It's a sneaky little thing, so Get quieter, get more still. Tap into your divine feminine. It feels like joy and bliss and giggles and loftiness. That's all there for you. If you are feeling like, uh, I'm interested, but I don't even like, I'm gonna have to watch this video like four times because I don't even know where to start. That's totally fine. I am so happy to offer you a complimentary clarity call. We sit down, we chat, we find the tools that are going to activate you into your alignment. Because of course, once we get into alignment, we more powerfully co-create intentions. With those powerfully co-created intentions, we are dynamically manifesting. And when we're dynamically manifesting and creating more and more and more of what best serves us, then we end up on the path of guilt-free thriving. When we end up on the path of guilt-free thriving, we join the other people, the other feminine energy bias beings who are healing the world because that's one of our superpowers. But you can't heal if you are not in alignment. You can, but you're gonna have to be giving up your essence, your time, your energy, and if you're not enriching yourself and taking care of yourself, and by the way, if you're trying to heal and, you, um, and you're not in alignment with yourself, then you probably are giving away yourself. What that looks like is your body going all kinds of out of whack. It looks like sickness, exhaustion, overeating, undereating, oversleeping, undersleeping. And the body finds a resting place. It finds balance in the imbalance. And that's why we get into alignment, yeah? Okay, so lots of tools available to you. Watch the video two or three more times if you need to. But what's most important is that you're hearing what Brown is offering. Are you working very, very hard to engineer a way to be small? Thank you for joining me today. It's always a pleasure. Subscribe, get more opportunities to get into alignment so that you can get on the path of guilt-free thriving. It's yours.
I'm on it. Other people around you are on it. Join us.